standing on the platform of truth. Pioneer Health and Missions. The message to the loudest scenes is a most solemn message. What are the loudest scenes guilty of? We will look into this now. We will begin by reading a statement found in the Review and Herald, pen in 1873. Notice what it says. The message to the Church of the Laodiceans is a startling denunciation and is applicable to the people of God at the present time. The message, we are told, is of a startling denunciation. In other words, it's shocking. It's unexpected. It's surprising. Why? Because most Laodiceans are unaware of what's taking place. What is said about the Laodiceans? Notice, Revelation 3.15 reads, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. Jesus is here stating that I know your works. I'm familiar with your deeds, your actions. He is not saying, I know your doctrine. I know your profession. No, he is saying, I know your works. And your works are not in harmony or do not align with my word. It is very important for us to acknowledge this fact. We must recognize that the things that are being pointed at are our works and not our profession. The loudest seeing congregation is composed of those who know the truth, who are familiar with all the points of the established faith. In other words, they are not ignorant of these truths. However, the loudest seeing church is one whose works do not align with their profession. Furthermore, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, we read, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest, and are dead. The Sardis congregation had a similar experience or similar condition. It had a name professing to be alive or professing to live, but was dead. Again, their works or their actions did not align with their profession. Let us turn now back to Revelation chapter 3 and read verses 17 through 18. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blinded, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. I wonder why the Laodiceans are not aware of their condition. We just read that they know not. Why is this so? Perhaps because the belief of knowing the truths of God's word or being acquainted or having the knowledge of the truth is more than enough. But this is not so. As a matter of fact, the more we know, the more we will give an account for. The problem with the Laodicean congregation is that their works, their actions are not aligned with that which they profess. A good question then to ask is, what are these works that the Laodiceans are guilty of? The following testimony should give us insight or should answer this question. We have a message of warning to the church. God says to you, be zealous and repent. I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelation 2.5 Now notice the following, and pay close attention to what it says. 
precious time has been squandered in which you might have won souls to Christ. Souls that through your love of ease are now lost. Every member of the church should awake to duty now. May God help you to take on the burden. Let the church members pray and fast and believe. Let the hearts of parents be turned to their children and the hearts of children to their parents. Lest I come, saith the Lord, and smite the earth with a curse. We read, precious souls have been squandered in which you might have won souls to Christ. She further states, souls because of your love of ease are now lost and calls for every church member to awake and take upon this responsibility or this duty now. How much more so can this be true in 2020? If we continue to disregard the preaching work, are we truly followers of the Christ? Are we not in danger of having our lampstand removed permanently? Is being familiar or having knowledge of the truth enough for the salvation of our souls? Absolutely not. This reminds me of Ellen White's statement where she refers to the working church as a living church. Notice the following statement. The living Christian is one who has not left his first love and his candlestick is not removed out of its place. A working Christian is a living Christian and such one will not have his candlestick removed. Friends, we need to revive. We need to awake. We need to arise and shine. And how is this to take place? Notice the following statement. We are to look to Jesus to catch his spirit. There's the answer. To catch his spirit. To live in the light of his goodness and love. And to reflect his glory upon others. We are to catch the spirit of the Christ. And we are familiar how he walked when he was upon this earth. We are familiar with his footsteps, but we are lacking in following after that pattern. We have been given the message of health, not only of health reform in the physical sense, but health reform also in the spiritual sense. And yes, health reform is part of the gospel message. Health to the nations, as Jesus brought, was both physical and spiritual. Notice the following statement. Let the church arise and shine. Let every family practice self-denial, doing all they can to improve their own condition. Those who are truly on the Lord's side will be self-denying and self-sacrificing. They will eat and drink to the glory of God, refusing to corrupt soul and body by intemperance. Then the condition of the church will testify that her light has not been removed. But if church members do not act the part God has assigned them, the movement of health reform will go on without them, and it will be seen that God has removed their candlestick out of its place. Those who refuse to receive and practice the light will be left in the background. It is up to us if we will heed to the Laodicean message. If we don't heed to the message, we will be left in the background. We have the message that brings again health, both spiritually and physically. What are we doing with this message? Sure, it is well and good to practice this message. By all means, we must obey the light. But if we are not sharing the light, we will give an account for not sharing it. And this is the message given to the Laodiceans. I know your works. I know your profession. That you have a name that professes to live, but you are dead. And we know it not. We think that by knowing and being familiar with the truths of God's word is enough. Unfortunately, 
That is not the case. We must, as the Christ, be about our Father's business. And we must work, dear friends, as we can see before us how quickly things are changing and how this world is fast approaching its end. Friends, the words that Christ pronounced over 2,000 years ago should sound loud and clear to our ears today. Work while it is day, for the night comes, or is coming, when no man can work. Under the present circumstances, we understand that there is a challenge for us to share this message. But if we take these thoughts, if we inquire of our Heavenly Father to enlighten us, to guide us, to show us how we can share this good news with our neighbors, He will direct our paths. Standing on the Platform of Truth